Good morning, and welcome to A Moment of Truth. I'm Stoney Kaiser, pastor of the Church of God of the Union Assembly here in Dalton, Georgia. It is such an honor to have you tuned in today. I hope that you are having a great 4th of July weekend. I uh, hope that all has went well with you and that you have, en- have enjoyed the, um, the 4th of July and the celebration of our independence here in America. We, uh, I'm so thankful to be in the land of America. It's, uh, it's a great country to live in. Uh, I don't agree with everything that goes on in this country, but I am thankful today that I do have a right to worship the Lord according to the dictates of my own heart. Um, I believe in religion. I believe in salvation. But there is a difference between religion and salvation. Apostle Paul had religion when he was persecuting the church and wasting it. He said he lived the straightest sect of religion, a Pharisee. But until he saw the light of Jesus Christ, then he became a Christian. And uh, he wanted to persuade everybody else to be that, that Christian that he had become to be. And that's what I want to do here today. If you're not living the life of Christ, I would love for you to follow the example that Apostle Paul had left there. He said, be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Today, if you're not following Christ and you're following your own way, let me tell you, there's destruction headed for you at the end of that. We have to follow Christ. If the wrath that is to come that God is going to put on this earth when he destroys the, uh, the filth of the flesh and, and all the, the thorns and all, when he takes it all away and casts it into outer darkness, uh, if you're living the life of sin as a tree falleth, so shall it be. You've got to live for Jesus Christ. You've got to turn your heart and life over to him and believe in him. Uh, speak, speaking of that, I've, I've thought about this past week, about all the American flags that I've seen flown and um, people that are proud to be an American. And I am. I'm glad that I am an American. I'm, I'm thankful that this country was founded on, on Christian beliefs. Um, I'm not so sure that everybody today, and matter of fact, I know everybody today that, that lives in America doesn't have that same that same desire to, uh, to have those Christian beliefs that this country was founded on. Uh, these things that, it, that happen and, and laws that are made that are totally against Christianity and what Christianity stands for and what Christ believed in. Uh, I know that God is love, and, but love is not God. So just because that uh, someone thinks they have a desire for someone or care for someone doesn't mean that they have God in their life. We need to know God. We need to know the life that Jesus Christ has put in our heart. I was thinking about the flag and, and how beautiful that it is. I've, I've seen a lot of these places that we go by has the, uh, the, the really large flags. And when the wind's flying and, and I, they call her old glory, is just standing out there and, and, and waving in the wind. How beautiful that is, those, those red, white, and blue uh, stripes and stars. And it's just it's beautiful to, to, to see that. And I, I got to thinking about our allegiance to the flag. And in, in there it talks about us being one nation under God. This country was established in Christian morals and Christian beliefs and, and that we believe in God and we know that he is real. Uh, I believe today that some of our forefathers that, that founded this country, if they could see the mess that this country is in, uh, they, they would turn over in their graves uh, to see how that, that people are lived and, and how, how that things are allowed to be done now that, that was not back then. But I, I was thinking about the allegiance to the flag and how that we, in there it says, one nation under God, individual with liberty and justice for all. Liberty is, is a great thing. I, I think about our, our independence, uh, the declaration that we have. It states in there that we have the freedom of religion. Um, freedom of religion. I want to tell you something about religion. The Bible teaches us that pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, that we visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction and to keep ourselves unspotted from the world. What is in the world? The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world, and the world passeth away. Everything that's in the world that is not of God is going to pass away. Someday God's going to clean this earth up, and he's he's going to take the thorns out of it. He said, Jesus said he would send forth his angels that they would gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and them which do iniquity. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of the Father. What a day that will be. It's what we all are looking for. 
But I want to talk a little bit about this liberty, liberty and justice for all. You see, just because our Declaration of Independence gives us a right to, to serve the Lord uh, religiously according to our own dictates doesn't mean that everybody is serving in a Christian manner. Uh, religion is not always that of Christ. Like I said, Paul had religion when he was a, a Pharisee. But then Christ come along and he became a follower of Jesus Christ. And today there are people that claim liberty, claim to have religion, but they're not living according to what God and the, the Word of God put in, it, in his book. So as, as much as our declaration gives us an opportunity to serve the Lord and have freedom of religion, it also gives people the freedom to do things that are against the will of God. And I want to go... Speaking of liberty, I want to go up to what Jesus had to say. And this is in Luke, the fourth chapter, and the 16th verse. What, it, what liberty is it that you have? I know here in, in the land of America, we have liberty to, uh, to live free. Uh, we're, we're not under bondage to, to men. No, nobody can come and make me do anything other than what the law allows them to do. Um, so there's a freedom, and freedom doesn't come cheap. There's people that are still dying today for the freedom for me to even be able to sit right here and to, to bring on this program. There's people that are fighting right now uh, to, for that to happen, and I give, I give praise to those people. I honor those people for what they have done. I honor our forefathers for what they've done and the vision that they had sitting out here for, for the land of America so that we could do the things that we do. But this didn't all come from just our forefathers here. It also come from things that were written of old, the, the men of, that died and fought back in, in biblical days. And, and, of course, through Jesus Christ, all the life that we have. God hath given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness. It all come through Jesus Christ. Here in Luke, the fourth chapter and the 16th verse, uh, if you want to read with me, it says, And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted and to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of the sight to the blind and to set at liberty them that are bruised to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Set at liberty them that are bruised. Satan today may have you in bondage. Just like the children of Israel were in bondage and, and they, they wanted to go to the land of promise. God had given them a land and told them that they would inherit a land where milk and honey flows. That same promise and heir that God had given to Abraham, he's given to us if we are Christ's seed. Well, when we preach the gospel, we preach liberty to people. Out, to get out from under the bondage of sin. So people would have you to believe that you just have to sin. I don't believe that. Uh, little John, as I've quoted many times, my little children, these things I write unto you that you sin not. But if we sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Christ Jesus the righteous. He is the perpetuation. He is the remedy for our sins. Not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. Those sins we can get out from under. That liberty in Jesus Christ to know him, to know his peace. Um, I want to go to 2 Corinthians, the uh, third chapter and the 17th verse. Um, the, the Spirit of the Lord, Jesus said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel unto the poor. He's anointed him with that Spirit, that Holy Ghost. Today, that Spirit is still alive today. Jesus Christ said, If I go away, I'll pray the Father, and he'll send you another comforter, that he'll abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth. That spirit is here. The truth is what you need to know. Don't listen to what everybody else would have you to believe because they'll lead you the wrong way, and I'll, as I'll get to here in just a minute. Here in the uh, Second Corinthians, the uh, third chapter and the 17th verse, it says, Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. What about all the things that have come down even recently? The Bible teaches us that these things are going to happen. It said in, in uh, Timothy's writing, the Second Timothy, the third chapter, he, he said that malicious uh, or, or uh, perilous times shall come. In the last days, perilous times shall come. Those perilous times, I want to I turn over there and, and read that for you. This is, uh, this is in 2 Timothy, the third chapter, 
And uh, the first verse reading down. Um, I'll get to it a little quicker right here on my iPad. This know also that in the last days peerless times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Men shall be lovers of their own selves. People have gotten to the point to where they would rather have their own self satisfied than to suffer afflictions. Like Apostle like, uh, uh, Moses, he, he chose rather to suffer the affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. They're, they're lovers of their own selves, things that they would rather enjoy uh, than to serve Jesus Christ. Lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Does any of that sound like what's going on today? All of it does. It's so unreal uh, as to how the people are living today. They've turned from Christianity. They're falling away from Christ they're turning from Christianity and living a, a life of, of hell. And we don't want that. We, we want people to know the true, true life. Um, I want to go to 2 Peter 2 and verse 14 a reading down. And this is what we have to be careful of. This is what is going on with people. People are leaving uh, the tr true principles of, of God and, and living a, a, a horrible life. This is uh, 2 Peter 2 and verse 14. Don't, don't let your liberty, that because that you have an, an, a freedom to do whatever you want to, let, don't let that be uh, cause maliciousness. Don't let that, that liberty be a, a malicious that, that, someone could set a, a, that you would set a stumbling block in someone's way. Don't, don't do that. Um, try to let people know that the liberty we are looking for is that perfect law of liberty, that liberty that we can be free from sin. This is 2 Peter 2 and uh, verse 14. Having eyes full of adultery and that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls, this is what people are doing, beguiling unstable souls, and heart they have exercised with covetous practices, cursed children, which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray. That's what people are doing today. They have forsaken the right way and have gone astray, Follow after the way of Balaam, the son of Bozar, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. Uh, I want to jump down to the 18th verse. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lust of the flesh. They allure through the lust of the flesh, through much wantonness, those that were unclean escaped from them who live in error. While they promise them liberty, listen to this now, while they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption, for of whom a man is overcome of the same is brought in bondage. This corruption that is in the world through lust, it started back in the beginning. Don't let man cause you to err and lose out on God and the liberty that you can have in Jesus Christ. That liberty you have today can cause you to be, that the, the men of corruption can give you, can cause you to be lost also. Come see us down at the church, 2211 South Dixie Highway. May God bless you is my prayer.